الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسول المصطفى أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to a new episode of سيرة خاتم النبيين those of you who've been following the series will know that in the first five or so episodes what we have been detailing both as an introduction and also as a, just to wet the appetite is the excellent status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also to try to drive you on uh, to see it through this whole seerah and this whole series of the seerah uh, plenty of alliteration there and close to slipping from seerah to series so easily and to see the whole series through if we can there yeah, throw in, in again to in order to be able to get a fair and good understanding of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to develop our keenness about him uh, uh, to like and to eventually love and to eventually obviously this the, the result of to love is to follow in reality now i did say at the end of the last episode that what we're going to do now is actually turn to the seerah itself and i did say as well that is very factual uh, and i want it to be factual and to be as close to the source text as uh, sources as, as possible uh, the reliable sources as possible so it, in order to ensure that what I'm sharing with you is the the real most reliable position with respect to what was associated with the Prophet Sallallahu life now we all know the Prophet Sallallahu was an Arab so we're gonna start there because we're gonna start from even before the Prophet Sallallahu arrived on the surface of the earth uh, and Hani's project so in terms of the Arabs you know where where do the Arabs trace themselves to well, s there is a view that they trace themselves to Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, who was the son of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And, and this, but the, the issue is that the original Arabs or the Arab al-Ariba, uh, they were known and they came before Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. And who were there? They were the people of Ad, uh, Thamud, uh, Tasim, Jadis, Umaym, uh, Jurhum, and the Amalik, uh, as well as others. So we can see that even though this, this, this initial claim that the Arabs started with Ismail wasalam, there is sufficient evidence and the sort of more relied upon position seems to be that the Arabs existed prior to that. Uh, and the ones which we consider to be Arab al-Musta'ribah, which are the Arabicized Arabs, meaning they became Arabs afterwards, they are the Arabs of the Hijaz and they were the descendants of Ismail wasalam. So in reality what we're saying is, or in, in conclusion what we're saying is, that the Arabs had existed prior to Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, mentioned a few tribes, and then after that, uh, those others also became Arabs pr after the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam arriving in, in Mecca. Um, we have the Arabs of, of Yemen as well, uh, the Himyar, uh, and they are said to be from a, a Qahtan, and, uh, and whose name was uh, Muhzam, and it's been stated that there were four brothers, and the four brothers were Qahtan, Qahit, uh, Muqhit, and Faliq. Uh, and uh, Qahtan was the son of Hud, and uh, he's said to have descended from Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, as others, as uh, key uh, narrators of the uh, key narrators and key biographers of the Prophet sallallahu narrate. So we have this uh, individual, and there's also a, a lineage that has been mentioned that Qahtan was the son of Al Humaysa, who was the son of Taiman, who was the son of Qaida, uh, who was the son of Nab, and the son of Ismail, uh, and they had linked their genealogy across to him. Uh, we have a, a hadith uh, which Imam Bukhari mentions uh, with respect to the excellence of uh, uh, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. And also, it, 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 it sort of traced the ancestry of uh, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. And, and the hadith, uh, if I'll narrate it to you, uh, can be found in uh, Bukhari, in which it's uh, mentioned. Uh, this is in the Babu Qawli Allahi Ta'ala, Wathkur Fil Kitab Ismail. So it mentions it under this ayat, and the hadith is, Haddathna Qutaybatu ibn Sa'id, Haddathna Hatimun an Yazid ibn Abi Ubaid, an Salama ibn Akwa radiyallahu anhu qal, Marra Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wasallam ala nafri min aslam. The Prophet ﷺ walked past a, a group of people from the tribe of Aslam, Yanta Diluna. For Qala Rasul ﷺ, Irmu Bani Ismail, Fainna Abakum Kana Ramian, Wa Ana Ma Abin Bani Fulanan. Qala Fahamsika Ahadu Farikaine Bi Aidihim, Fakala Rasul ﷺ, Malakum La Tarmoon, Fakalu Ya Rasulullah, Narmi Wa Anta Mahum, Kala Irmu Wa Ana Maakum Kul Kul Kulikum. 
So the hadith itself mentions that when the Prophet was uh, uh, walking past a group uh, and the tribe was, uh, there were a tribe called Aslam, and they were sort of fighting one another uh, with swords, or in another case, it mentions that they were firing arrows. Uh, so he says to one of the two sides, he says, Oh, carry on fighting, uh, or carry on casting, O sons of Ismail, and I will be with such and such tribe. So it seems there was a competition going on at the time. And so the Prophet aligned himself to one group. Uh, so they all stopped. They stopped firing arrows, they stopped fighting. Uh, so he said, What's wrong with you? Why, why have you stopped? Uh, so they responded, how can we combat, uh, how can we carry on firing these arrows if you are with such and such tribe? So he said, okay, carry on and I'm with all of you. So he mentioned that I will be with every single one of you. Uh, so in another one, obviously the one I narrated to you, he mentions that your forbearer was a skilled marksman because he mentions it, O sons of Ismail. Uh, carry on uh, and I will be with that particular tribe. So you can see that this, the, the, the um, Imam Bukhari also mentions that Aslam, who this, this tribe that this, uh, the Prophet Sassam walked past and mentioned to them that you carry on firing the arrows, is that Aslam was Ibn Afsa, Ibn Haritha, Ibn Amr, Ibn Amir, is from the type, tribe of Khuza. So we can see that this tribe that the Prophet was walking past, or members rather of this tribe that the Prophet was walking past, have been linked by Imam Bukhari himself all the way to Khuza. And Khuza uh, is uh, that what a group of those who had split up split off rather from the tribes of Sabah and we're going to mention Sabah as well which is mentioned in Surah Al-Sabah uh, when Allah SWT sends against them a flood uh, from Aram but we, when we get to that point we will elaborate on that uh, and also the tribes Aus and Khazraj were also from Sabah so the tribes Aus and Khazraj uh, are the two tribes which resided in Medina uh, when the Prophet of Allah SWT was invited uh, to Medina and to lead and bring these uh, uh, warring tribes together. So these were the tribes of Aus and Khazraj. So they also are linked to this place, Sabah. Um, so he basically, and also we find that the Prophet SAW, when he said that, he said he could refer to them as O sons of Ismail. Okay? He was quite clear to uh, draw this uh, distinction. He said, Irmu Bani Ismail. Ismail. Uh, and he's drawing this uh, clear lineage that your lineage goes to Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. I just want to touch upon a point there that you can see how scholars, uh, muhaddithun, and also those of, of fiqh and, and of other sciences, how you find a hadith which is specifically talking about something else. And our attention is drawn onto this particular event that's going on. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was walking past. He can see these groups of people uh, firing arrows, sort of competing with one another, maybe firing at targets. And, um, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is kind of like, uh, kind of, uh, uh, motivating them, aspiring them, uh, giving them some aspiration to carry on and, and, and kind of compete with one another. And at the same time, he sort of assigns himself to one of the groups. As soon as he does that, obviously, the other group is feeling a little bit uh, uh, grieved and a little bit uh, upset at the fact that, well, what chance have we got now if the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi is with that group and we're in this group, you know, there's not much chance we're going to win. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam realized that, the, hold on a second, hey, why have they stopped? So he asked, and they said, well, you know, how are we gonna, what, what chance have we got with you, with them? So the Prophet said, okay, I'll play on both sides. I'll be, uh, I'll be with everybody. But that seems to be what's the key point, and that's really what draws, you know, the, uh, the untrained eye and the inexperienced eye, which is just about this little event which is going on, it's, and, and we just sort of draw uh, sort of ideas and understanding from there. But what we fail to realize is there's also a fact which the Prophet of Allah is, 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 is elaborating on, or rather uh, making a pardon. And that fact he's making a pardon is when he refers to these individuals as Bani Ismail. Uh, meaning that you are the children of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Your, your lineage goes through them. Um, and this is, this is the point that is, is meaning. So, this, so it seems to be that these Qahtani Arabs, uh, they were from uh, Yemen or elsewhere. They were not from the line. This is the Qahtan tribe that we mentioned earlier. There is a large number of uh, uh, historians and those who are uh, genealogists rather who also kind of look into this area. They say that the Arabs are divided into two strains. Uh, those of Qahtan and those of Adnan. Uh, and the Qahtan consists of two types of people, or two peoples. There is the Sabah, which we've already mentioned, and then there's Hadramaut. Uh, and those of the Adnan are also from two tribes. There's Rabi'a and Mudar. And you, some of those of you who are students of, of Hadith, and those of you who are students of history, 
Uh, and in fact, those of you who are students of any of the Islamic sciences, these names will sound familiar to you, Hadra Maud, uh, uh, Mother. In fact, some of these are actually used in uh, Arabic grammar books as well uh, to explain certain rules of, of Arabic language, particularly what types of words they are and what type of uh, ellipt elliptical uh, point or dialectic uh, verbal mark it can take or not. Uh, the, uh, the two sons of Nizr were Ibn Masud, Ibn Adnan. So there is also a fifth people which is mentioned, and they are the Quda. And there's some dispute as to who they are. Some say they are from the tribe of Adnan. Uh, others say not so much, uh, and they give a different uh, 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 understanding. But it does say that the Quda uh, can trace their ancestry also back to Adnan, both before and after Islam. Uh, so here, you, so you're seeing these various groups, and, and, and you're hopefully kind of drawing things together as to where, who are the actual source, uh, what is termed as an Arab, uh, who are the Arabicized Arabs, uh, and, and what, on what was going on since and, and since then. The other theory which is mentioned is that the Quda have descended from Qahtan, uh, Ibn Ishaq, and a number of other uh, experts in ge ge geology uh, mentioned this. Um, uh, what does Ibn Ishaq say? He says that uh, the people Quda is Quda Ibn Malik, Ibn Himyar, Ibn Sabah, Ibn Yashjub, Ibn Ya'rub, Ibn Qahtan. So he links uh, Quda to Qahtan uh, and he draws this uh, 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 link between the two. There is another view. The other view is uh, uh, Quda is Ibn Malik, Ibn Amr, Ibn Murra, Ibn Zayd, Ibn Himyar. So that's drawn up to uh, Himyar. Um, we have a narration which we can quote as well, which will add further to, to what we're discussing here. That Ibn Lahia mentions on the uh, authority of Ma'roof Ibn Suwaid from Abu uh, Ushaba, Muhammad Ibn Musa from Uqba Ibn Amir, uh, that the last one, and Uqba Ibn Amir said, I asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whether we were descended from Ma'ad. Uh, he replied that we were not. So I asked who we, who we were. Uh, he replied, you are descended from Qudai Ibn Malik Ibn Himyar, which supports this uh, view that was the second view that was given. Um, others have drawn other genealogies or, or, or ancestries. Uh, one, for example, is that Quda uh, was a, a woman of Jurham. Uh, she, Malik, she married Malik ibn Himyar and they gave birth to a child who was also called Quda. Uh, and then she married Ma'ad ibn Adnan while his son was still young. So this is where this kind of uh, the two uh, sort of uh, ancestries are coming together and which could bring about some uh, confusion. So we've mentioned various uh, tribes, I've used the word, and, ge uh, and ancestries and whatever, and it seems a good point as well to now sort of introduce the, uh, la the language or the taxonomy of how uh, the various tribal structure of the Arabs was, because the Arabs were a very uh, tri tri tribalistic people. Uh, and it wasn't just that there was tribe, that's it, so there's Aus, Khazraj, and that's it, but there were levels, tabaqat, uh, uh, of uh, 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 sort of uh, groups of people coming together. So, for instance, we have uh, Shu'ab, or, or, or Shu'ub, uh, rather. Uh, Shu'ub is referring to peoples, okay? Then there is Qaba'il, and Qaba'il is tribes. There is Ama'ir, and these are also in the, all in the plural, and these are the tribal uh, sort of confederations or groups. There is the Butun, which are uh, sort of sub-tribes of the tribe that I've al already mentioned. There's Avkhad, which is even a further division of the tribe. There is Fasail, uh, which is sort of uh, re relatives, but slightly extended out. And then there is the Asha'ir, uh, which is an extended sort of family. <coughs> And also, uh, this is Asha'ir, also those who are uh, close to the man himself. So we've got some understanding how now that the, the way the tribal structure was, was set up, the, the various genealogies that, that existed, the ancestries of the people and how and who were Arabs and who weren't Arabs. Uh, so we have uh, the uh, Qahtan, which we've already mentioned, then the Arabs of Hijaz, who are the Adnan. And also there is the uh, discussion of the Jahiliyyah. So we've, got, we've, we've, we've mentioned that and we've, we're going to go into those areas first before we uh, touch upon the life of the Prophet because there 
act as a backdrop, they act as a background, um, because nothing in, in any society or in any uh, uh, practice or walk of life is in a vacuum. There's always a context, there's always a, a background, there's always a backdrop that we need to sort of fill in first before we then introduce the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam into this environment, into this scene, uh, in order for us to then better understand his efforts and his work. So this, we're in, a, in, we're, in another way, we're setting the scene. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, Imam Bukhari mentions again in, in his uh, chapter on the Qahtan people that Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah told us, uh, quoting Suleiman ibn Bilal from Thawr ibn Zayd, from Abu al Ghaith, uh, from Abu Huraira, that the Prophet وسلم, said, Judgment Day will not come until a man from Qahtan goes driving his people with a stick. So, this Qahtan, and this shows the relevance of why it's important to give you this uh, scene, to give you this. Uh, to build up to the Prophet Sallallahu because there's narrations, uh, there's events taking place which are mentioned in the Quran, uh, there's events taking place in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi there's going to be events that he prophesizes, which is just this particular one here, in which he's going to make reference to groups of people, in which he's going to make reference to individuals, in which he's going to make reference to tribes. So it's better that we understand that uh, before we actually uh, introduce the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and this is also narrated by a uh, Muslim. Um, Imam Ahmad mentions uh, that he said that we get the uh, message from Abu Hay from uh, Dhu Fajr uh, that this status once belonged to the Himyar, but Allah SWT withdrew it and placed it with the Quraysh. Um, so he can see that this the status was given to the people of Himyar and then that was removed and then given to the people of the Quraysh. And for those of you who have some uh, uh, rudimentary understanding of the Seerah or some rudimentary understanding on Islam, will know the Quraysh is the actual tribe which the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came from. So we did mention uh, Sabah a few times and we mentioned that, they, you know, that we're going to hopefully elaborate and discuss uh, this story uh, in order uh, for us to sort of better understand what's gone on in Yemen in particular because Yemen seems to be mentioned quite a number of times and its influence on the Hijaz and the people who came from there because we mentioned that Aus and Khazraj can actually link themselves back to Yemen and there were also certain events which took place uh, in Mecca which will have links to Yemen. So to do that first thing is it's important if we if we mention the uh, relevant verses associated with this. So if you go to if we go to uh, uh, Surah Saba uh, and that uh, you can find uh, obviously in your uh, uh, Mus'hafs, uh, when you find Surah Saba, uh, you'll find, for instance, uh, the ayats, which are ayats number 15 uh, down to, say, 19, uh, inclusive, then you'll find a tale which is going on. So let me, let me uh, recite to you the verses and then give you a, a translation. A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim bismillahi rahmani rahim laqad kana li sabain fi maskanihim aya. Indeed, there is in Saba, in this, in this place, Saba, fi uh, maskanim, in their homes, in their residences, uh, a sign for you. And a sign meaning, uh, what, what, what are signs for? We normally see signs on walls. Uh, they tell us, you know, which direction to go in. Uh, they're informers, okay? That's what signs are there for, you know, in, in a nutshell. They're there for information purposes. So what is, the, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying here? That they, this is a sign, meaning reflect over their, their, their sort of life, reflect over especially the next few verses which uh, I will recite to you in order to understand their situation and how potentially you could avoid it uh, uh, or you could see the telltale signs, <coughs> excuse me, you can see the telltale signs if you end up going down that way. Jannatane ayyameen wa shimal. Two gardens on the right and the left. Kulu mi rizqi rabbikum wa shkuru lahu. So eat from the rizq Eat from the sustenance, the provisions, Rabbikum of your Rabb, Washkuru lahu, and be grateful to him. We, we, if you recall uh, a few episodes back when we mentioned when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was given the option either to be a king prophet or to be a normal person prophet, he chose uh, after consultation with Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasalam that he would be a, uh, a, a normal person, a servant uh, 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 prophet. And why did he say that? He gave an explanation. He says, I'd rather be uh, satisfied, or I'm paraphrasing obviously, I'd rather be uh, hungry one day and, and full the other. The day I'm hungry, I can ask Allah SWT, uh, for sustenance, for food. And the day that I'm satisfied, I can uh, pr praise Allah 
I can uh, 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 acknowledge the gift he's given me, I can express my gratitude, things of that nature. And we see in this verse as well, Eat from the rizq of your Rabb and be grateful to him. So when we are given sustenance, when we are given good things, that's our time to show gratitude. That's our time to show to Allah, Allah praise him more, uh, mention his name, uh, do dhikr, glorify him, uh, you know, pray extra nawafil, uh, give some sadaqah because times are good, now's the time to invest in your hereafter and, and things to that nature. Baldatun Toyiba wa Rabbun Ghafur. This was a very blessed and, and fertile and fantastic land. It had everything going for it. Its land was producing. Uh, the people were happy. Wa Rabbun Ghafur. And the Rabb was forgiving and kind and merciful. Fa'aradu. But what happened? They turned away. So it wasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who turned away from them. It wasn't that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped giving these ni'mats. It wasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who stopped giving what he was giving before. They turned away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never changes a ni'mat which he bestows upon a people until they themselves change it. So if something's not going right in our lives, if something's not happening for us, then that's not the, to blame and say, ah, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not giving me this or he's not giving me that or whatever, whatever. That's a time to actually think, well, hold on a second here. What is it that I've done? that has made Allah SWT not pleased with me. There must be something that I've done because, you know, that used to happen for me, that used to happen for me, I was having good days, I was happy, whatever. Now this is going wrong, business is going wrong, my relationships are going wrong, uh, I'm losing money, whatever. Whatever the circumstances have befallen this person, he's got to think, well, this is due to my actions or inactions. Either I've done something wrong or what I was supposed to do, I haven't done. So he should now ponder over that. He or she should reflect over that. And when they reflect over that, somewhere along the lines, they'll find that they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they did something which displeased him. And so what they need to do is rectify that. And as soon as they rectify that, as soon as they sort themselves out, then those ni'mats will start again. So what did they do? Fa'aradu. So they turned away. Fa'arsalna alayhim sayl al-arim. So we sent upon them the flood of arim. And we mentioned this flood of arim, if you recall, earlier. وَبَدَّلْنَاهُمْ بِجَنَّتَيْهِمْ جَنَّتَيْنِ ذَوَيْتِ أُكُلٍ خَمْتٍ And we changed for them their two gardens, and in place of them we gave them أُكُلِ الْخَمْتِ وَأَثْلٍ وَشَيْءٍ مِنْ سِدْرٍ قَلِيلٍ And I'll explain to you those in detail. ذَلِكَ جَزَيْنَاهُمْ That is our recompense for them. That is what we gave in return. بِمَا Why? Because the B here, the Ba Harfajar or the... the Back with the kasra on it, with the zair on it, be be ma kafaru. Why is what? Why is Allah subhanahu wa taala? Why did He do this to them for? He mentions it. He says be the ba here is mentioning why He did that. He said thalika jazayna hum be ma kafaru, because they dis disbelieved, they did, they turned away from Allah, they renegated. So because they turned away, Allah subhanahu wa taala gave them this in exchange. So it's not that Allah subhanahu wa taala did this first. You did something and you reap what you sow, as the saying goes. You brought this onto yourselves. Wahal nujza illa al kafur. And do we not, uh, uh, sorry, wahal nujazi illa al kafur. And we don't give in exchange or we don't recompense except the kafur. Wajalna baina huma baina al qura la ti barakna fihi kuran tazahira wa kadna fiha sayr. Siru fiha layali wa iyaman ayyaman aminin. Fakalu rabbana baid baina asfarina. وَذَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَحَادِيسًا وَمَزَّقْنَاهُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّقْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ سَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ And he finishes by saying, indeed, in that are signs for every patient and grateful person. Now I would love to explain what actually happened to the people of Sabah. I would love to go into great detail as to what happened, but we're running out of time now. And because we're running out of time, all I can say to you is, do you really want to find out what happened? What did the people of Sabah do? What happened? What did they turn in? What type of gardens did they get in exchange? Uh, what, you know, what, what, what was in those gardens? How can we avoid the circumstances? And how does this tie in to the seer of the Prophet ﷺ? Well, for this initial information and for how this ties in with the Prophet ﷺ's life and what happened to these people, you'll have to join me again uh, in our next episode of Sirat al-Khatim al -Nabiyin, in which we explore the biography of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after we have set the scene you know, before his arrival, the time of Jahiliyyat and even before that. I hope you can join me again when we, uh, the next time. 
جزاكم الله خير أحسن الجزاء وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته